We're actually recording this time, I think. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sound Approach. We are talking preamps and amps today. We're going to be sitting down with DJ and Ron, who have a vast wealth of knowledge about these things, and they're going to tell us the differences between preamps and amps and uh, why they're important for your system. So without further ado, let's magically replace me with them, and then you can hear all about it. Hi. Well, Ron, um, we're back together again to talk yeah. about preamps and power amps. I know you're excited and I'm not. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'm excited. Anyway, uh, so the question comes all the time on the phone, and I know you're on the bench fixing things day in and day out. I get the phone calls. Uh, what is a preamp? Now, to me, I refer to it as the electronic traffic. Top. But on a technical side of things, you may look at it as a little different than that. Well, that's a pretty good analogy, like a traffic cop, because what you're doing with a preamp is providing a means of selecting several inputs that that you can select with a selector switch and run it, run it, run it into either a passive attenuator control, which does nothing more than attenuates the the signal coming in from the source to provide an input to the power amplifier. So, attenuator. But that's, a, that's a passive preamp. Right. So, a preamp has inputs on the back that, accept, that accepts CD players, um, DVD players, could, uh, turntables, uh, tuners, AM and FM, Perhaps reel to reels, eight tracks, cassettes, yeah. all manner of inputs. Even streamers. Oh, streaming, I forgot yeah. about that. That's yeah. a new modern thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The only input on the back of a preamplifier that is, I consider, non standard in terms of its voltage input selection is the turntable, the phono. Exactly. Is, is that, that is that, correct. That is correct. Okay. So on the front of a preamp, is the selector knob that gives yeah. you the ability to go from one input, phono to tuner to tape player or right. whatever it is. And then there's another knob on there. It's called a volume knob. You refer to that as an attenuator. That's correct. And why do you say attenuator versus volume knob? Well, a, a volume knob is basically an attenuator. Oh, so it's, it's one a, and the it's same. A, it's a logarithmic attenuator. So if someone online uses some fancy term like you just did, attenuator, it, it basically is a volume control. Exactly. So on the preamp side of things, uh, the only oddball in the inputs is that phono stage. Correct. And the phono stage has two types of cartridge inputs, moving magnet and moving coil. That's We're not going to get into that today. That's correct. We'll save that for another day. The reason for that is you can have a, a, a line level input for phono if you have a separate moving coil or moving magnet pre preamplifier. Ah, so which if boosts the gain of the very low signal coming from the cartridge. Ah, so if a preamplifier doesn't have a phono input, you can add a separate magic black box yep. and use any input. Yes. For that, yes, because the pre preamplifier output is a line level in output. Okay, so uh, and the reason you can't take a turntable and plug it directly into uh, an aux input is because of the RIAA equalization curve. And, and again, we're not going to go into detail about that today. We'll save yeah. that for another um, okay video. Okay, but that is a specific input on a preamplifier that. Sounds like crap if you plug the turntable into another input Absolutely. or you turn, uh, plug the CD player into a phono input. Yeah. Terrible sounding. Yes. So, preamplifier, our electronic traffic top, it gives us the selection of the source we're going to listen to. Yep. And it gives us the ability to have volume go up and go down. Right. But from a preamplifier, we have to go to something we refer to as a power. Amp. Right. So, what would you consider to be the power amp? 
a power amp takes the line level output of the preamp, which has been attenuated or controlled, controlling the volume level, to present to the power amp as a voltage input. The power amp converts that voltage input to a current drive output to drive a speaker, which is like a motor. So the power amp generally does not have volume controls on them, although they could. Typically they don't, but some do. And a power amp typically takes a certain level of signal input that is a fixed level out of the preamp right. at all times. So there is no source selection in a power amp. No. It's a separate device. Right. So if we have a receiver, it is one chassis that has the power amp built onto it, the preamplifier built onto it, and it also has a tuner built into it. Correct. If we take the tuner off, we're left with what's called an integrated amplifier. Correct. Preamp, power amp built together. Right. If we pull those apart, we're left with the preamplifier and amplifier and the power, power amplifier. Amp. And power amplifiers could be little baby amps or they could be mono blocks. Very powerful things. Right. And all of that relates to the type of speaker that we're going to use as to whether we choose monoblocks or Correct. stereo power amplifiers. Or in the case of home theater, it could be a five channel or seven channel or power amplifier channel. or 11 no. channel. No. Companies like ATI build yeah. those types of things. Right. Which I know soundapproach.com sells that type and of product. And I have one. Oh, you, yeah. oh an ATI. <laughs> yeah. And that's a the good three channel. It's a good sounding it's a product. Okay, so do we need to know anything else other than you may be confused, so you should call us and we can help ferret through the variations of preamplifiers and inputs and matching power amplifiers, right. including the match of the electronics to the speakers. I know this week, last week, week before last, we are constantly getting questions about the differences between 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 5 ohms, and 8 ohms, and 16 ohms, and so forth and so on. I'd yeah. like to leave that for another day. But yeah. that confusion, we could mitigate the frustrations mm -hmm. by just calling us, and we'll help match that speaker to the power amplifier, yeah. the integrated yeah. amplifier, or its appropriate preamplifier. So. Any other unique comments from a technological standpoint that we should know about this product? Uh, a preamplifier can be as basic as a simple box that has a selector switch to select the input and a volume control. You can get as exotic as you want with a, uh, a passive preamp, and there are a lot of them out there. They're depending on the quality of the parts. The uh, Active preamplifier relies a, a lot on the power supply that's feeding the amplifier section. If the uh -huh. power supply components and the design is not critical, you're going to sacrifice sound quality. I see. So, so it's important to pick manufacturers pre of preamplifiers that select parts inside that are, that are very high in quality. Right. You know, that raises an interesting question because we sell a ton of headphones. Yeah. Um, I think of Final Audio as one of the better headphones that we sell. Mm -hmm. So in that particular case, we find people buying headphone amplifiers. Are they interfaces to the preamplifier to go to the power amplifier or are they standalone pre-stages or amplifiers? They're usually standalone pre-stages. So would you ever take a headphone amplifier and bridge it, an output out of the preamplifier into it for the performance of your headphone? No. You I, would never I, do that? I don't think so. So how do you get the signal into the headphone amplifier for the headphones if you don't come out of a source off of a preamplifier? Do you use the source directly into that device? That's correct. Uh, usually the, the headphone amplifier is a separate unit that has one input. You can use a s external preamplifier to select whatever input you want to go to your headphone amplifier. So in reality, if we only listen to headphones, we could take a high quality preamplifier yeah. without the power amplifier, yeah. use the pre out of that device to yes. go into the headphone amplifier, 
just for listening to no exactly. cans on and our you heads. you get a very high quality result. Do you think there's a difference in quality between pre-amplifiers and power amplifiers? Is there a, um, a balance that should take place for the same sound quality to uh, propagate all the way through the system? That's a good question. Uh, I've stomped you. I knew not, I would. not exactly. <laughs> uh, it's my opinion that if you have a preamp and a separate power amp, typically you're going to get the best performance using the same manufacturer with of the same standard of quality. I see. You don't want a cheapy preamp mm -hmm. feeding a powerful, high quality amplifier. Ah. You're going to sacrifice the sound quality feeding to the power amp. Mm -hmm. So if you have a super expensive, high quality preamp going to a crappy power amp, you're not going to get the results you want. So matching within manufacturers could be a really good thing. Absolutely. But you have manufacturers, again, I'm going to go back to ATI, that don't make preamps. They make really high quality power amps. They do make high quality preamps. ATI doesn't make preamps. They only make power amps. They're I'm, out of the I'm preamp mistaken. business. They're I out of the preamp business. They I stopped that, that five years ago. So See, if we're going to match an ah, ATI, we make sure that they preamplifier that goes into it is of similar quality. Similar quality. Yeah. And so and we can make that. Oh, you stumped me out there. Well, that's that. okay. <laughs> the world changes. It's, it's, and you have to keep up with it. And it's a horrible thing to do these yes, days but yeah. i mean remember the last conversation we had about ftc and their changes in power and standards yeah. and that yeah every day there's a new exciting variation exactly. in what's happening in our world